I don't know, I've watched thousands of hours of Korean movies. <laughs> And I don't know Korean. When I start calling them patterns, then they're like, oh, that's relaxing. Okay, I could use this pattern. You know, some people go like, well, that seems like a lot of thought, Paul. Well, it's really only a lot of thought the first time you do it. You don't want to just be a parrot. You want to be able to, you know, talk about whatever. I was doing undercover operations on the phone in Spanish, because when they see me, it doesn't work. So my goal, because she said, some people don't have an aptitude for a language and you're one of them. So that I'm like, oh no, I. I gotta learn this now. Hola chicos, hoy aquí estoy con Chu Ru Paul. Paul, welcome to the channel. Hey, thanks for having me. I don't do too many collaborations, but uh, you know, couldn't pass up one with Nate here. Yes, thank you, Paul. Uh, give us a little intro of yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Well, I'm a retired law enforcement officer, and uh, while I was a law enforcement officer, I had I was in Florida. I worked in migrant neighborhoods, so I had to learn Spanish. I was not good in Spanish in high school. I was terrible at it but I had to learn it out of necessity. So um, later in life, after I retired, I moved to Mexico and then, you know, hung around there for several years. And right now I'm back in the States. And now you make YouTube videos online, right? I make YouTube videos, yes. Run a couple different channels, they're going pretty well. I got got some plaques, so it's, it's going all right. Okay, so Paul, I wanna know, you have learned Spanish to a high level. You've taught lots of people Spanish. What is the fastest way to learn Spanish. What is your routine, your method, your theory? What is the fastest way to learn Spanish? Like, you know, there's a lot of different opinions out there and what people think, you know, the fastest way. I know some folks think that if you just are around the language a lot, you're going to pick it up, you know, through osmosis or some immersion. But I know from living in Mexico, um, had a lot of neighbors from the US and Canada, he had been there years and years and years didn't learn any of it. I learned to speak Spanish working in Florida and talking to people who are in the U.S. for years and years and years and never learned it. So that doesn't work by itself. Personally, what I think works is kind of trying to break down the language as much as possible and relate it to the one language you have. That's your language paradigm. How is it the same? How is it different? And then trying to learn just some basic patterns like starting verbs like with quiero and then dropping in infinitives or learning cognates learning these little snippets of the language that you can move around in a sentence to create a whole sentence because once you actually start doing that you can talk to somebody you start picking up words and that's when the next part comes in because you can't just do that you've got to be around the language you've got to listen to the language well now that you start getting these little snippets you're picking up more you know and when you're having a conversation you're getting a little further so you're motivated getting a little bit further and starting to develop your ear or the language. So I think there's a combination of learning some basic patterns of the language. And a lot of times those patterns are grammar and people hate the word grammar. They don't want to learn anything. They don't care what an adjective is or the subjunctive or imperfect. And to be honest with you in English, I didn't care either because I spoke English. But if you don't speak a language, then grammar is great because it is the pattern. And once you learn the pattern, you can actually create sentences that you may never have seen or heard before by taking this pattern and swapping a word. When I met my wife, my wife's originally from Colombia. She moved to the US when she was 10. After we got married, we went to visit her family in Colombia and her uncle was on the Supreme Court of Colombia, the Constitutional Court. And I was kind of intimidated. So he, we're speaking Spanish, he didn't speak English. And so a lot of things, you know, I got used to talking about police things at work, but now I'm not doing that. So I'm using these patterns and I'm making up sentences that I've never really heard. I'm assuming they're correct. And at some point he goes, you speak grammatically correct Spanish consistently. He goes, I'm really curious how you developed an ear for the language so quickly. And I said, oh, I have no ear for your language whatsoever. Nothing sounds right or wrong to me. I just learned these little mini patterns. And so I'm using them and using deductive reasoning to throw out a sentence. And Spanish is so logical, especially compared to English, right? I'm sure you've noticed. Because of that, you can use this method a lot. And then of course, as I'm using it, I'm saying more complex things and I'm piecing these patterns. And pretty soon you're doing it without any thought. You're just speaking Spanish. You know, some people go like, well, that seems like a lot of thought, Paul. Well, it's really only a lot of thought the first time you do it. It's like, if I gave you a complex math problem and you worked it out, the next time you saw the problem, you're just gonna spit out the answer. What's 142? You didn't go and work it out again. The same thing goes on with language, I think. So that's how I think the fastest way is, so. I love that. And I, I don't think, know, what do you think? No, I love that. And it's interesting and I love hearing you say that because I am also, I think, a very grammar-focused teacher and I try to not, you know, tell students, oh yeah, we're just gonna do the grammar because ultimately, like you said, 
most people are not interested in that and most people just want the end goal which is being able to speak they just say i just want to speak so you kind of you you know you have to say okay yes but this is how you do that and i love what you said it's i always tell students it's like a formula just like you're saying it's a pattern same idea a formula just like you said with the math example love that you learn the formula the pythagorean theorem you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared whatever same idea with spanish and i always like to think of it as like learning how to play an instrument. My uncle can play the piano beautifully. He can play beautifully and he can play whatever he want because he had to learn the notes and the scales and all of that, which most of us don't want to learn. However, most of us just want to learn how to play songs, right? We want to be able to speak the language. So we learn the phrases of like, como estas and hola and other things, but we don't actually know, like you said, how to piece them together. So I like to tell students that where it's like, okay, Learning this grammar stuff is like learning the notes and the scales so that you can play whatever song you want instead of just learning the little words and phrases so you can play songs here and there, but you you can't really do whatever the heck you want. So I totally agree. I, I love that. Yeah. You don't want to sound, you, you, you don't want to just be a parrot. You want to be able to, you know, talk about whatever. Totally. And I think that that's, that's what really works. And I, my videos are very grammar heavy. I use a lot of grammatical terms and I tell people, don't be scared by the, the English grammatical terms. That's the most intimidating part of this. It's just so you know how to look things up later. You know, what area should I focus on? For some folks, when I start calling them patterns, then they're like, oh, that's relaxing. Okay, I could use this pattern. Yeah, that doesn't sound like grammar. So I, sure. I think that's where I pick that up. But I do say formula also sometimes, you know, like plug and play formula, drop things in. Yeah, totally. Totally. I love that. So let's imagine that you're starting to learn spanish from zero you already know everything that you know about learning spanish how are you going to go about learning spanish if you were to do it all over again so there there were a lot of missteps but i think i would definitely um starting out in the language is focus on learning some of that basic grammar and how to create my own sentences when i, when I teach people we often talk about what we want to do what somebody else wants to do so you know i learn i teach them how to say like i want you want next thing is you know, with poder, what I can do, what I can't do. That's how we get permission. That's how we, you know, we pitch ideas and then what we have to do. And a lot of people like to use like necesito, but I don't. I like, I like tengo que okay, because you're going to use tener for everything. So sure. it segues out, you know, showing how to make basic sentences and then telling people to narrate your own life. Just talk about what you want to do and what you have to do. And, you know, what can I do? And then if you don't know a word, you go back and look and you keep filling in, but you narrating your own life gets you out and gets you talking. And now with all these resources, you know, we've got great videos and, you know, we can have interactions and you can talk to native speakers. Really try to expose yourself as much as possible. Personally, I'm a big fan of like Korean action movies and you can watch old ones on YouTube. A lot of times they're dubbed in Spanish. So I watch that. I think when they're dubbed in English, they must get flagged for copyrights. I don't know. So, I mean, if you're entertained, you're more likely to stick with it. So, you know, try to find something that entertains you and I tell people to resist putting English subtitles when you do that because you've just become so fixated on those, you don't pick it up. And I know you don't because again, Korean action films, a lot of them had English subtitles. I don't know, I've watched thousands of hours of Korean movies and I don't know Korean. Use the Spanish ones because I want you to see the words and kind of see how they're arranged. You know, it's just that, that kind of exposure. That's how I would do it you know, to get up to speed quickly. And I've, I've taught people a lot over the years and I taught law enforcement officers for years and then I tutored people and now YouTube world, you know, teaching people on YouTube. Yeah. So and that, that works pretty well for a lot of people. They, 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 I get a lot of positive feedback. People are like, hey, I was on Duolingo or Babbel for three years straight, you know, and I learned more in three videos than I did in years. I don't know what your opinion is of, of those particular apps but mm. yeah it's a good question i, I mean don't. i think like when it comes to maybe the way i look at it and i think we're both very similar in this i i always tell students i kind of have like the three pillars so one is grammar like we talked about uh and then speaking and listening and then the kind of two bonus ones are reading and writing for me because i think most people nowadays and you know i could be wrong on this but most people i think don't read maybe as much as they should and they consume more you know video content or things like that um and i so i think reading and writing oftentimes come through texting online whether it's like in an online community or friends or whoever um but yeah i i agree it's kind of the the same thing of you know learning the grammar learning the patterns like you you were talking about what I always tell students, and I think this applies to a lot of things, is the learning process never ends. You know, I've been at this for 10 years. I make YouTube videos. I teach people Spanish. And there are still things that I learn. And so I think it's important to go into it with that mindset of, 
I can always improve. I can always get better. And so I think that kind of maybe makes the learning process a bit more relaxed so that you can say, okay, I can enjoy the process because I think when people take it so seriously, they start to take themselves very seriously, which I think inhibits the amount of learning. So that's, that's kind of my take. <laughs> no, yeah, I agree. People get, uh, and then they, they overanalyze, they get the analysis, paralysis, things like that. The other piece of advice I usually give people, and I see people do this wrong all the time, is they try to think of an entire sentence in their head before they say anything. And we don't do that in English. So they're, you'll see them, they're like, I know they're working this out, but the conversation's gone. You know, it's gone. So I, I teach people to focus, you know, I'm like, focus on some of your sentence starters just so the person stops talking. And then you can kind of slow it down as you piece. And that's why if I'm teaching you little snippets of the language, you can piece these together like train cars. Just get that locomotive going. Somebody sent something, you know, and you're like, well, something. You got to say something just so they'll stop, you know. And then you kind of just put on another one. But take as much time as you need. You can, you know, speed up, slow down. But if you try to think of a whole sentence, you're never going to say anything. I mean, just think if you did that in English, it, it, you're just pausing that long. That's one of the ways I get people more conversational pretty quickly is, you know, also focusing on some of those sentence starters and some of those things to segue, you know, whether it's entonces, sin embargo, no obstante, whatever, you know? And I said, you don't have to learn them all. Another thing people I think do wrong is they learn five different ways to say the same thing, which is great. You'll pick that up in time. But then they also do this because now all five flash in their head. Pick one you really like you know, that fits your style of speaking and just keep using it. After all, you're going to know what the other person's saying, you know. Sure. Just makes you faster. Sure. I 100%. Think. I love that. Okay. My last question for you is, if there is one piece of advice you could give to someone learning Spanish, what would it be? My piece of advice to anyone learning Spanish would be not to get discouraged because you're going to go into it just like, you know, it was New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, you joined your gym, you're going to get ripped by the end of the year, you're going to have your beach body, whatever. And then you realize it's a lot of work and you're not seeing results at first. So you think of it more um, as a journey and focus on just being a little better at the language than you were the day before. That's it. You won't get frustrated that way than you were the day before. And then after a while, you look back and you're like, I've come so far, I can say so many things, you know, focus more on, on that, not necessarily how far you have to go. When I was a deputy and again, I got a D in high school Spanish, I would have failed. But Mr. Roy did not want to see me again the next year. She did not care for me too much. So my goal, because she said some people don't have an aptitude for a language and you're one of them. She told oh me gosh. this in high school. Wow. So that I'm like, oh no, I... I got to learn this now. So my goal at the time was just being able to have, get somebody's name and date of birth or maybe do a traffic stop. And then my goal was just to be a little better. So eventually I was the highest ranking person that could speak Spanish. So I was doing the television interviews for Univision out of Tampa. I was doing public speaking for the Mexican consulate out of Orlando. I'm doing question and answer sessions with migrants about the law. I'm speaking about legal things in another language. I was doing undercover operations on the phone in Spanish, because when they see me, it doesn't work. But on the phone, it's different. So I went from just trying to know some basic things. And, and that's all it is. If you just say learning, like you talked about, you know, it's a process, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, don't get discouraged. That'd be my, my main piece of advice. I love that. Okay, cool, great advice. I recently shared a, a photo with one of my students who's kind of discouraged. And I said, you know, we think that progress when it comes to learning anything, the, how to play the guitar, how to, get shredded or whatever. We think it's like this, but in reality in, a, in the photo, it's kind of like, it's like this, you know, and it's kind of all, and you go back down and then, it, and then maybe eventually you kind of go out on top. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> it is like that. Well, Paul, muchas gracias. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to link to Paul's channel down below so you can check those out. And uh, thank you so much for chatting with me today. It's, it's been really, really interesting. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> you have a great day. You too. If you want to become conversationally fluent in Spanish as fast as possible, check out the Fluent Spanish Speaker Academy. Here's what some of our current members have to say. Claudette, a USC med student, says, I've taken a few semesters of Spanish classes at my college, but using Nate's course helps me facilitate my knowledge to a whole other degree. I become more comfortable with the language and I've learned to love the journey. We stand behind our program with a 30-day full refund policy. If you're not happy within 30 days, we'll give you your money back, no questions asked. To find out if the Academy is right for you, click the link on the screen or in the description below.